hey everyone and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be sharing with you the steps that you can take to create your e-portfolio for food nutrition and health and this same video can be used for those persons doing the other areas in home economics whether family and resource management or clothing textiles and fashion if you have not yet subscribed to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button leave a like drop a comment below and share this video with anyone who may find it useful To create our e-portfolio, we're going to be using Google Sites. So once you click on the apps, you're going to then click on Google Sites. It will then take you to this page. You have the option of using one of the templates provided there or you can start on your own. So I'm going to be starting from scratch. So I'm going to click on blank. It will then take me to this front page. So one of the first things you probably would like to do is to personalize your e-portfolio, you know, to make it your own. So to do that, you're going to click on theme. Next, you will see the option to create a custom theme or to work with some of the themes that they have provided there. So one of them being simple, you know, just to select random colors, play around with it, try and see which one suits you, which one you like best or not. To change the theme that I'm currently using, I'm going to click on create theme. From there, it will then ask me to create a banner image. From there, I'm going to click on upload and clicking on upload will then take me to the images that I already have saved on my computer. So these images I downloaded prior to doing the video. So I'm just going to select one that I think is more appropriate and then I'm going to change the name of my theme. So I'm saving it to food too. After doing that, I'm going to click next. It will then ask me to choose a color palette. I'm going to let the one that is already there remain. And then I'm going to click on create theme. So now you can see that my new theme was created. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is now to name my page. So I'm going to name it, well, pretty standard. I'm going to name it food, nutrition and health e-portfolio. All right, after I've named my page, I can now go ahead and customize it. So I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to change the font color to something a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to change it to orange. I can also change the style of font. So I'm going to change mine to lobster. And then you can also choose to put yours in bold or you can put it in italic. You can even go as far as to change the size of your wording. And just like that, we have created our first page. On the screen, you will notice that I added some information that is required for the cover page. So things like the name of your school, assessor's name, candidate's name, and the year. So now we can move on to adding a new page. So I'm going to click on pages, click on the plus sign, and then I'm going to enter the title of my new page. And we're going to be doing the table of content next. So once you click on done, your new page will appear with the same theme that you would have created earlier. Once you have selected the insert tab, it will show you different things that you can add to your pages. So you can add videos from YouTube, pictures, Google Docs, calendars, maps, page dividers, you name it. Let us create our table of content. To do this, I'm going to click on table of content from the insert column. Once I've clicked on this, a message will appear on the screen informing me that I need to now add headings in order for them to appear on the table of content. So I'm going to scroll back to the top of the insert page. I'm going to click on text box and then from there, I'm going to switch from normal text to heading. And I'm going to now type the name of my first heading and for example purposes I'm going to be using introduction as my first heading. Now of course we have to have additional information on our table of content so I'm going to be repeating the same process again I'm clicking on text box then switching from normal text to heading. Now for our portfolio we know that our table of content must be listed by units and by topics so I'm starting off by writing unit one first which is diet and health. Now that I've listed the name of my unit, I'm going to now move on to typing the topic and the list of portfolio entries that can be found under that particular topic. However, I'm using a smaller font to write this information, so I've switched over from using heading to subheading. So the examples that I'll be listing for this topic as portfolio entries would come in the form of glossary of terms, 
word search puzzle, worksheet, practical assignment, test, and reflection. Remember that for each topic, you should have at least six portfolio entries. Now that I have the first draft for my table of content, I can click on the small icon beside the undo button to see a preview of how my page will look for anybody that views it. All right? So now that I've seen my preview, I can now click on the X button and return to editing my page. So next we're going to link some actual pages to the information listed in our table of content. Now to do this, I'm going to add some additional pages. So again, click on the pages tab, click on the plus, enter the title of your new page, click on done and your new page will appear. Now I'm going to do this one more time. So again, clicking on the plus icon, entering the name or the title of my new page. Then I'm going to click on done and my new page will appear. Now it's time for the exciting part. So we've created two new pages for two portfolio entries, right? So now I'm going to go back to my table of content and now we're going to actually link those new pages that we have created to our table of content. So the first one I'm going to do is for glossary of terms. I'm going to start off by highlighting glossary of terms and then I'm going to click on add link. There I'm going to find the page that I want to link it to. And of course, it's going to be Glossary of Terms. From there, I'm going to click on Apply. And then you will notice that Glossary of Terms is now underlined. So let us do this one more time. This time, I'm going to be highlighting Crossword Puzzle, clicking on Add Link. And then I'm going to find the page that I want to link it to. So I'm looking for Crossword Puzzle, click on Apply. And then you will notice that the item that we would have highlighted earlier is now underlined. All right, so now for the fun part, let us see if all of that work that we would have just completed is actually working. So I'm going to click on preview and now I'm going to click on one of those items that we would have done earlier. So I clicked on glossary of terms and it now brought us to the glossary of terms page. Let us try it again with crossword puzzle, scrolling down, click on crossword puzzle and it has now brought us to the crossword puzzle page. So our table of content is underway. Now let's say you want to add a file to your page. Now you can do this by either uploading it from your Google Drive or you can scroll down and you will see the option to add a document from Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets, Google Slides or Google Forms. So I'm going to select my file from Google Drive so of course I'm going to click on that. And then because I just edited a document I'm going to click on Recent. Once I've clicked on recent, I'm then going to select the file that I need. So let's just pretend that this document that I'm going to select is actually a crossword puzzle. Once you have selected the file, it will appear on the page. And then once you click on it, you have the option of now making that file a bit larger. So that's what I'm doing here just to give you an example of how you can do it. Now let's say you no longer need the document or you added the wrong one, you can delete it by clicking on the trash bin icon on the upper left hand corner of the file. Now we can move on to inserting images onto our pages. So you can do it by clicking on images at the very top of the insert panel or you can use some of the layout options that they have provided there. So I'm going to do mine from images. So click on images, then click on upload. Once I click on upload, it will then bring me to my different documents and downloads. So I have some images here that I downloaded prior to doing this video. So I'm just going to select a few from my documents and it is going to automatically upload the images here. So we're going to do that again. Click on images, click on upload. And then I'm going to select the image that I want to upload to my page. And just like that, the image will appear. Now again, if I want to delete the images, I can just click on the trash can icon and they will delete or disappear. All right. Now let's try to use one of the layout options that is provided on the panel. So I've selected a layout that gives me the option of adding three photos. So I'm going to click on the plus, click on upload image 
and then it will take me back to my document so i'm just going to click on the images and they will automatically appear so let's do that again click on upload select an image and then it will appear in the box one more time click on the plus icon click on upload and then select the image that i want to add to that particular section and then beneath the images you will see that it will give me the option to add a text so i'm just going to write the name of the dishes beneath it so of course you know we have an omelette we have breakfast sausages and we have pancakes now let's say you want your images to appear in a manner that is a little bit more fancy you can do this by clicking on image carousel once you click on that, you will see the option to upload images or to select images. Again, I'm going to click on upload and then select the image that I want to add. Now for this particular feature, we have to add more than two images. So I'm just going to go ahead and select three random images from my documents and then I will show you the outline afterwards. Alright, so now I have added my three images. I'm going to click on insert and now you will see that the images are now on the page so again you can adjust the size of the images if you'd like to you can move it from the corner to the center and of course I'm going to show you the preview version so clicking on the preview icon it will take us to the page that will appear when another person views it right so for this particular feature we can see the images now in the form of a slideshow so that's a great one and of course you can always view your page in tablet form like you're seeing now or you can view it from a cell phone point of view like you're seeing it now once you have completed your e-portfolio you can always share your site to allow individuals to either view or edit it thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe